just let out, yell louder, yell louder. And they were cutting themselves and making themselves bleed, thinking that, okay, this will bring our God back. And, and finally, they, they were just wore out. And Elijah says, okay, it's my turn. So he prepares his sacrifice. He gets, you know, uh, slaughters a bull, puts the sacrifice out. And he tells them, he says, okay, go get three barrels of water. And they've dumped these three barrels of water on them. So there's no accident here. There's no accidental fire going to happen here. You got barrels of water poured on the sacrifice. And Elijah prays. And he's asking for forgiveness for, you know, for the nation of Israel. And he prays. And when he, as soon as he gets done praying, fire comes down out of heaven. And it consumes the fact, it consumes the, the altar, the sacrifice. It consumes their sacrifice. It just burns everything to smithereens. There's nothing left. The stones were burned up even. Amen. And Israel is sick. I mean, the children of Israel, you know, I, can you imagine the looks on their faces? When, and, they, and they realize that they have turned their backs on their God. And they have turned their backs on their prophets. Because their prophets had warned them. Warnings after warnings after warnings. God had led them. And, 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 and they didn't just start one day and wake up and say, Oh, God, I'm worship Baal. It starts real small. Mm -hmm. Real small. And so they ended up loving this imaginary God. Mm -hmm. And so God doesn't want anybody to die. He, he wants everybody to turn to Him. He, want, he doesn't want anybody to die. That verse is, uh, I can't find it. I, I think I have it wrote down, but there's a verse in Scripture where it says, it does not please God for men to die. God is not willing that any should perish. Ezekiel 18.32, For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live. So, the prophets of Baal, from what I understand, reading in Patriarchs and Prophets, the Patriarchs and Kings, Prophets and Kings, excuse me, uh, they had a chance to say, we will worship your God. But they would not. They refused to worship. After they witnessed the devastation of the sacrifice and the altars and the stones, would that get your attention? I mean, really, would you? It's like, whoa, I've been worshiping the wrong God. You know, and God, and He has, and let's not forget, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I believe He's talking to the Adventist church today. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Um, you know, and, and we need to ask ourselves, I mean, Jesus says, if you know me, he says, he says, I can't remember that verse. Oh. Where does salvation come from? Jesus. Jesus. If we just mention Jesus' name, is that, does that mean we're, okay, I'm saved because I mentioned Jesus' name? I, I don't mean to sound casual, but that's how... That's how you get it. Yeah, I, I'm saved because I know Jesus' name. Do we know Jesus? Do we know God? I have to ask myself that question. I'm not asking you to ask yourself that question, but I think I would. I'm asking myself that question. Do I know God? Am I like the Israelites who are so stubborn until they saw the fire come down from heaven? Do you have to see fire come down from heaven to know your God? Our God has given us His prophets. Not just Ezekiel and Daniel and Jeremiah and Isaiah. I believe that God has given us the Adventist church even more. And today, I, this was in the bulletin last week if anybody read it. Last week, uh, it says uh, on the back, it says, Solemn warning against despising God's message and messengers. Now, 
Correct me if I'm wrong in your life. If I uh, want to know something about God, and I, I should be able to go to this and check it out. But human beings have a way of deceiving themselves. I mean, there are 42,000 denominations who use the same Bible worldwide. 42,000 denominations who use this Bible worldwide. Now, 42,000, do they have the truth? There's only one, one body, the church. There's only one head, Jesus Christ. And there's only one body under that head. Jesus says, if you love me, what does he say? Keep my commandments. I only know of one church in the whole world that keeps God's commandments. All ten. We're not 90 percenters, as my friend Catherine used to say. She'd argue with people. Uh, what church, what day? She, they said, do you, she'd ask them, do you keep the commandments of God? They said, yeah. What day of the, the, of the week do you go to church? They'd say Sunday. She says, well, you're a 90 percenter. <laughs> but just because we keep the commandments of God, does that mean that, that, that we have salvation? No. Of course not. It, it's not, it's, we, don't, we, we don't keep the commandments of God to be saved. We keep the commandments of God. Why? Yeah. Because we are saved. Now, God, in His, in His infinite mercy, and another thing about God, it, before I, my time runs out, i, I got to back up. Don't let me forget where I was. <laughs> Uh, Hebrews 10, 24, and 25. And, and I, got, I got two versions of that. It says, and I, I love this, and, and I, I, I shouldn't. Uh, anyway, verse, Hebrews chapter 10, and verse 24, it says, And let us consider one another to, to provoke unto love and good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. It says, do not forsake the coming of yourselves together. Why? We have got to come together. To, to, and it tells us right here. It says, but exhorting one another. We have to build each other up. We have to provoke unto love. We provoke one another. It says, consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Now, I'm, I, I'm talking to myself too, so y'all, please remember that. The human race, we have smeared God's <coughs> And to me, one of the most pivotal points in all of history. Now, as God, I had to write this down. I, this was just too much for me. And it, and it came to me today. It said, as God in His divinity made the decision in eternity to pay the sin debt for man. God in His divinity made the decision to pay the sin debt for man. He decided long ago, I'm going to pay their sin. I love them. I want them to be with me. I want to uh, have friends with me that love me because they love me, not for reward or fear of punishment. I want them to love me. He says, but in his humanity, this is the this blows me away. In his humanity, this is the pivotal point when he's in the garden. And he says, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. He says, He's talking to himself, tarry here with me and watch with me. And he went a little further and he says, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will be done, but let your will be done. That was in his humanity. He, had, he, was, he was frozen. He had to make a decision on whether to pay the sin debt for the human race or for the lack of a better way to put it, put the game back in the box and go home and forget about the human race. 
When I hear people say, I can't come to Bible study because I got something else to do, I don't, I, I say the same things to my friends, but they don't know what I'm thinking. Now they do. When I hear that, I can't make it to Bible study for some excuse, I think of the Via Della Rosa, where Jesus made, made the decision to, to walk with the cross from the beating place that he took the beating and walk with the cross on his back and he couldn't even carry it. What he did for the human race and he could have said, Father, let this cup pass from me. And he says, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. He could have said, I'm done. These people don't care about me anyway. They're going to, they would rather go to, uh, to Red Robin or or go to some family meeting, or, or play baseball, or, or, or something, rather than, than meet. And it says, do not forsake the meeting of yourselves together. Bible study should be full, not, the, not just the church on Sabbath. And I'm talking to myself, too. There, there's times I don't want to go. I, I, I don't want to go to Bible study. It's like, okay, I'm going. And, and, and I can think of, I got tons of excuses. I got this shirt that I wear at the gym that says, no excuses. And I think about that when I'm a hypocrite. I go in the gym because I can think of a ton of excuses not to be here. Ready to tell you, I, sometimes I don't go. Here lately, I've been, I've been following that. But ask yourself the question. Ask yourself the question. I'm not, I'm not going to come to your house and say, all right, you're not coming to Bible study. That's not my job. My job to me is to uh, give the information, not just for information's sake, but as uh, I always say, it's for transformation. Yeah. Do you love your God? Do you, do, you, do you love your God? Now, my time is going to run out real quick, and I, I, I want to say a couple other things. Now, uh, uh, switch to the other side of your bulletin. And it says the Lord's messenger. And I was going to say this earlier, so I, but I stopped myself because I wanted to get everything else in. And this is kind of where I'm going to wrap it up. It, the way I see it, and you, you can beat me up later. Please don't beat me up up here up front. But you can beat me up later. <laughs> God gave us, God gave us this information, this book. This, this is precious. This should be the most precious thing to human beings. Because it's God's love letter to the human race. And I said earlier that we, like the Israelites, they thought they were serving their God. Do you know your God? Do you know your God? God figured, and this is, I'm paraphrasing this, God figured that you didn't know him enough. So he had to send more information. Think about what I just said. Yep. Why do we have the spirit of prophecy? We don't, we, do we need it? Yes. 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 Do we need the spirit of prophecy? Yes. Why? Because we got this. And it says right here, in the, in the Lord's Messenger, it says, Early in my youth I was asked several times, Are you a prophet? Have I, have I ever responded? Excuse me. I have ever responded. I am the Lord's Messenger. I know that many called me a prophet, but I have made no claim to this title. My Savior declared to me to be His Messenger. And this is Him talking. And, and He's the greater light. Let's not forget that. God, Jesus is the greater light. And he's talking to the lesser light. And he said, your work, he instructed me, is to bear my word. Amen. So he's asking the lesser light to bear the greater light. To pin down the greater light. Now, let's, let's keep going. It says, strange things will arise. And in your youth, I set you apart to bear the message to the Aryan ones. And I, I love the way she puts that. Strange things will arise, and in your youth, I set you apart. God set her apart. Ellen White was set apart to bear the message to the erring ones, to carry the word before unbelievers, and with pen and voice to reprove from the word 
actions that are not right, exhort from the Word. You now, we're, we're, we're saying from the Word. Okay, from Jesus. I will make my Word open to you. This is Jesus. I will make my Word open to you. It shall not be as a strange language. In the true eloquence, eloquence of simplicity, with voice and pen, the messages that I shall get shall that I give shall be heard from one who has never learned in the schools. Mm -hmm. And what grade did Ellen White graduate? Third grade. Third grade. It says, My spirit and my power shall be with you. Be not afraid of man, for my shield shall protect you. It is not that it is not you that speaketh. It is not Mrs. White. It is not her words. It is the Lord that giveth the message of warning and reproof. Amen. Never deviate from the truth under any circumstances. Give the light. I, sh I, I am the greater light. Amen. And I'm telling you what to put down. Amen. And what she, what she pins down is Jesus' words. I want people to hear what I'm saying. It is greater light that she's pinning down. This is words from Jesus himself. She says, she, she pins this down. She says, the messages of these last days shall be written in books. Plural, books. And I shall stand immortalized to testify to those who have once rejoiced in the light. Ricky, read that again because you said, I shall stand and it's the messages that shall stand. Please. Um, well, when it says, I shall stand, that's Jesus talking. Right? Yeah. Well, okay, let's back up then. It says, Give the light I shall give you. I shall give you. The messages for these last days shall be written in books and shall stand immortalized to testify against those who have once rejoiced in the light, but who have been led to give it up because of the seductive influences of evil. I want to submit that we have something very important. And Mrs. White herself, who says that these two men, and people don't like to hear these names, but she said it, I can say it. Wagner and Jones, the messengers of God, she says, delegated messengers of God. She never said that about any other person. No other person she ever put her name to their work. As far as I'm concerned, that's me. Me. When she said that about these two men, we need to look at their work. Not, not their works after they retired, after they went on from the church because they left the church. But, that, but, but did, that, did that change the message? The message still stands. The spirit of prophecy still stands. Even if Mrs. White had apostatized. The messages were still from God. We need to study those messages. We need to study them, and, and, I, and people hate when I say this, we need to study them like we study the scriptures. Because Jesus says, these are my words. And these are my words. Yeah. It has taken me a long time to get to this point. And I've been, I've been told that we need to get back to Bible study. We need to get back to studying the Word. And God has given us His Word through here and through His messengers. I think that's it's vital. They're both important. He wants to take us home. And without the 1888 message that was given to the world but never went to the world is still waiting to go to the world. The Seventh-day Adventist church is to give this message and when we go to somebody's house who are not Adventists and we talk about the message of God, let's not be ashamed of the message of God even if it, it maybe it, it, it ain't pinned down in here. When you read the messages that are from God, you know, you know, without a doubt, they're from God. God speaks to our hearts.
through His Word, whether it's from here or from the book I was looking for in the back, Lessons on Faith, God speaks to His, to his people. God is not going to uh, leave us uninformed. I love this Bible. But I also love the spirit of prophecy. Our closing song is number 296. I, Lord, I'm coming home.
do we listen to him? By his word and the spirit of prophecy, by his prophets and his messengers. Look at Israel and their belief in Baal, how far they went off track. God allows us to believe what we want to believe. God is who he is. That is who he is. Love does not force. God is not going to force us to accept his messengers or his message. <clears throat> but if we say that we know Jesus Christ, we have to look what he's given us. We cannot know him just by saying, I look, I, I, I'm going to be nice to my neighbor, I'm going to love him. After you love your neighbor and be nice to him, what are you going to tell him about your Jesus? You can't just say, well, Jesus loves you. And he does love you. But he wants the best for you. He wants you to know who he is intimately. That word know is an intimate type thing. It's like, I know my friends. I know my wife. It's an intimate. It's a very intimate thing. God wants us to know us to that point. Father, we thank you that we're important to you and you care so much about us. Father, we want to be pleasing to you, but we know that without you, we'll go the wrong way. And as your word tells us, without you, we can do nothing. Father, we want life. We want life more abundantly. We ask that you would guide us with your Holy Spirit, that you teach us the way to go. And Father, you said that your works come from the foundation of the world. Father, help us to let go of our works and take hold of your works that are already blessed. We thank you, we praise you because you're worthy of our thanks and praise. We love you, Father, because you first loved us. We love you, Jesus, and we love what you're doing for us in the sanctuary now. May we not get in the way of your cleansing work. Amen. May we allow you to cleanse our hearts to the point to where we can see your soon coming. Amen. It's in Jesus' name we pray.